Hello everyone, today we are going to talk about 3D Cartesian vectors. 3D Cartesian vectors are similar to 2D, they just have an extra dimension. Uh, whenever we are looking at uh, 3D vectors on our screen or draw it on a piece of paper, we are dealing with a 2D, so sometimes it's confusing when we are looking at 3D in a two-dimensional. It just takes practice to understand all the angles associated with a, a 3D vector. Let's say our coordinate x, y, z, we have a vector f. This vector f is going to have three components in x, y, and z. Show them by f, x, i, f, y, j, and f, z, k. If you have a direct angle to each uh, axis, then we can find the component pretty straightforward. Let's say alpha, beta, and then the angle to the axis would be gamma. Therefore, then f would be simply f cosine alpha plus f cosine beta plus f cosine gamma and then f cosine alpha would be corresponding to fx f cosine beta would be fy the y component and f cosine gamma would be the z component i j k would be the unit vectors of axis x y and z respectively now we have the components we can find a magnitude so if you want to find the magnitude, the overall would be each component squared, fx, fy, and fz. And the angle, or the direction angles alpha, would be cosine inverse, or arc cosine. Make sure that you could use cosine inverse and in uh, your calculator. You have beta, which would be cosine inverse of Fy over F. And then you have gamma, which would be cosine inverse of Fz over F. So we can find uh, the corresponding direction angle if we have the component and the resultant magnitude. Uh, these three angles are not independent, they are linearly dependent. So cosine alpha squared plus cosine beta squared plus cosine gamma squared equals 1, which means that if we have two of the angles, we can find a third angle. So in three dimension, we need one magnitude and two angles. So we need three components. The same as here in Cartesian form, if you want to represent it in Cartesian form, we need three components. And in terms of magnitude and angle, we need one magnitude and two angles. Let's look at this problem. So the screw I is subjected to the two forces shown, F1 and F2. They are in 3D. You can see there are a lot of angles associated with that. Again, the first time that you're looking at 3D uh, vector with the corresponding angles, uh, it might be a little bit confusing, but the more you look, look at it, the more problem you solve, it would be more obvious to you. Express each force in Cartesian vector form and then determine the resultant force. So our first task is to report it in Cartesian form and then we're going to add them together to find the resultant force and then find a magnitude and coordinate direction angle. If you look at the two forces, the force F2, we have the magnitude and then we have the angle to each axis, to X, Y, and Z, 60, 45, and 120. So it would be very easy for us. Force F1 is a little bit more challenging because the direct angle to each axis is not given. We have an angle 60 degrees, to its shadow in xy plane and then also we have the angle of that shadow to the y axis but before we move to f1 let's start with f2 force 
S2 to see uh, what um, components we have. So F2, have the magnitude, which is 500. Have the direct angle to each, cosine 60 would be for I. Let me factor 500 and then cosine uh, 45 to Y. So J component and also cosine 120 to K component. Uh, if I want to simplify that, then F2 would be 250i, uh, 354j, and uh, negative 250k. That negative comes from the angle 120. So for, in the case of 3D, I just write the corresponding angles and the positive and negative would take care of itself. Cosine of 120 is bigger than 90 and we know the cosine of any angle bigger than 90 is, would give us a negative value. So that's for F2, we had the corresponding angles 60, 45 and 120. We could find the component, so the Cartesian component. For force F1, it's a little bit more tricky. First, we have the angle to its shadow. So we can find the shadow of force F1 in X, Y plane. So let me draw X, Y plane here. Again, so this is Y and this is X. X, Y plane. They are perpendicular because I'm going to be consistent with what we have here. I'm just going to draw it this way. And then it goes to a negative direction of X as well. So we can find this vector, which is the shadow of vector F1 on XY plane. So this vector would be 300 cosine 60. This is the shadow of F1 on this plane. So that would be this line, this vector. We have the direct angle, cosine 60. And then we also have this angle as well, which is 45. 45 degrees. So now I can find F1. Uh, so F1 uh, would be 300. For X component, would be negative, towards negative X direction. That would be towards negative X direction. So that has a negative component 300 cosine uh, 45 or sine 45 it really doesn't matter here cosine 60 first of all this times the cosine of this angle or the sine of this angle to give me x and y components so cosine 60 sine 45 that give me the i component the j component the y still has that 300 cosine 60, then multiply by cosine 45 to give me the y component. And for z, here is we are dealing with 2d. That's why we have to be careful with negative and, and positive because all our angles in 2d are less than 90. So we have to be careful about the angle, uh, the direction and whether it's positive or negative. Now I'm going to go to the Z component. So the Z component here, if this angle is 60 between my vector in a space and the plane, then if I want to find this component would be 300 sine 60. So this 300 sine 60. So the Z component would be 300 sine 60. Okay. And everything is Newton here. So I can simplify F1. And write F1 here. Negative 106i plus 106j plus 260k. 
everything in a bracket Nieta. I have f1, I have f2, we can find uh, the resultant force, therefore the, also the, the angle. So the resultant force, I'm going to write the final answer here. The resultant force would be the addition of f1 and f2. We just need to add this component, f1 with f2 component, 250. Same thing for the j component and the z component. Now the components are scalar, so we can simply add them together. So fr would be 144 i 460j and 9.9a 1k neat so for x1 and x for f1 and f2 for f2 we could we had the direct angles for f1 it was a little bit tricky we had these shadow on x y plane or its corresponding uh, force in x y plane first we found that magnitude which is 300 cosine 60 and then find a component in x and y so let me find the angle as well Okay, so the question is also asking for the angle. Now I have the component, I can find the angle as well. I know cosine alpha would be FRI or FRX over FR. But I know alpha would be cosine inverse of what is FR, X component would be 144. The total component would be 482. So once we have the, all the components, we can find the result and force. It's just the square root of each component squared. So that's where that 482 comes from. Maybe I should write it here so you know where it came from. So FR is 144 squared plus 460 squared plus so all each component 9.81 and the result is 482 so that's for alpha same thing for beta and gamma beta is cosine inverse of fry which is 460 over 482 beta would be 17.4 degrees and gamma cosine inverse of this is the z component which is 9.81 over the magnitude of the vector 482 which gives 88.8 degrees so the answer to the question is Gamma, beta, alpha, and the resultant force. And then alpha would be 72.6. So the this answer, let me write it here. The angle would be 72.6 degrees. So that's the answer. And also this is the answer. So three angles and one resultant force if we have the direct angle that's easy if not we have to find its shadow and also the angle between the shadow and each uh, component